Hey everyone, thank you so much for being with me today. Um, this is the Daily Creative Challenge, Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge number two. I'm looking at a lot of familiar faces in the chat. How's it going, Bandam? Um, Ryan, Jesse, Juliam, Carlos, Claudi, Shaik, thank you so much for joining me this morning or afternoon or evening, depending on where you're watching from. I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area. Let me know in the chat where you guys are from. Um, hi, Lee Designer, Stone Sater, um, Bam Bam. Hey, how's it going? Um, how was everyone doing this Tuesday? So um, yesterday we worked on, and let me switch my screen over so that you can see my screen. This is the file that we're gonna work on today, but what I really want to show you is this page, which is the Daily Creative Challenge page. You can find it on behands.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. Make sure that you click on this big blue button so that you could follow the challenge. So please click on that. And then if you missed yesterday's stream, you can go and click on watch video to see the album cover. So one thing I didn't mention yesterday was um, that you can upload your projects onto Behance. And if you do, make sure that you use the keyword PS Daily Challenge so that, could, so that you could see all the other projects that people have completed with the creative challenges. And as you can see, some people uploaded some of the um, album covers that we worked on yesterday. So that was one, there's another one here. So make sure that you upload yours. So I just wanted to bring that up because I didn't mention it yesterday. So if you worked on an album cover yesterday, make sure that you upload it to Behance with the hashtag PS Daily Challenge, PS Daily Challenge. So make sure you do that. Also on this page, on the behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop page, make sure that you click on community chat. That way you could, um, you could chat with us through the Discord page, which is this page here. It's an awesome page where you guys could also submit your work under the creative, uh, not, not the creative challenge, the current challenge tab. And you're gonna see a lot of cool album covers from yesterday. A lot of great work, guys. So I'm, I'm really impressed with the work that you guys created. I like how you guys started using different patterns for your background, awesome work, different color styles. And actually that's one thing that I didn't mention yesterday. That was two things I didn't mention yesterday. When you were working on your album covers, something I should have mentioned is that if you uh, couldn't think of a color combination, you could have gone to uh, color dot adobe.com and that brings up this color wheel where you can select different color harmonies for example complementary and the color harmony that i was using yesterday was more or less like a blue orange color harmony so if you want to know what colors look good with each other this is a great resource so that you can combine colors so two things that i mentioned uh, from yesterday's challenge so you can probably go back and make adjustments to it work on it go back into Discord and you can leave your work here. I'm here, the other Adobe mentors and Adobe staff are there to help you out with any questions, comments, and concerns. So make sure that you check it out. Once again, that's on the chat, on the community chat page on Discord. So make sure that you check that out. Um, <laughs> Chaik said, today I am not orange. Unfortunately not. Maybe I should do it. That should be my thing though. Maybe I should just do all my presentations in orange. Why not? Um, but yeah. So also you make sure you come into this page and go into the get started button on day number two, October 29th for the glass effect, glass effect. And click on this button to open up a Dropbox link, which will contain a Photoshop file that has all these layers that we're going to use to create the glass effect and what we're going to be making is something similar to the um glass movie poster that movie that came out not too long ago so it was a poster where glass was breaking and you can kind of see people's reflections in the glass so that's what we're going to create and we're going to use um blending modes layer mask all these cool things to make that effect happen and also we're going to power up the challenge by using smart objects. So smart objects will be the advanced sort of part of the challenge. You don't have to use a smart object if you don't want to, but then you're gonna see why you're gonna wanna do that. So make sure that you download the get started file under behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. Let me just quickly look at the chat and see if there is 
any questions, just a bunch of hello. Um, hello, 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 everyone. Cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, no, what are the um, albums about, like music albums? Um, so yesterday we designed um, a modern um, album cover. So yeah, that's, that's what it was. Cool. All right, let's get started. So make sure you download the file and let me bring up Photoshop. Give me one second. There it is. And you should have this Photoshop document with three layers. I'm going to use this model, but you can use a selfie if you like. You don't have to use her. I just needed to use um, somebody and, you know, I'm not going to use me. She's much prettier than me, so we'll use her. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to use these layers to create that broken glass effect. So there's a lot of ways in which you can do this. Um, one of the ways that you can start is by simply using this bigger layer and just scale it up and then look for a piece that you want to use. So for me, I'm looking at this big piece here. So I'm just going to scale that piece up as much as I can. And I'm just going to commit the changes. And now I'm going to use the lasso tool and I'm going to click and drag around to make a selection around it. And I can then create a layer mask. Um, actually, before I create a layer mask, what I really want to do is duplicate the layer. So I'm going to click and drag the layer into the new layer icon, and then I'll create a layer mask around that. There it is. That's my piece of glass. Um, in this case, it's not necessary to keep the rest of the image. It's like a really large layer. It contains a whole bunch of information, and I don't really need it. So what I'll do is I'll just rasterize it, and I can also apply the layer mask because I'm only concerned with this piece of the glass. So see, I got rid of everything else because I don't need it. And I still have all the other pieces here. So with that piece selected, I can continue and transform it even more and rotate it and just place it into position. And I just want like this big piece of glass like coming towards us. So that's why I'm placing that here. So just placing that big piece of glass right about there. And what I'm going to do now is I can go through the different blending modes and see which one gives me the best result in, uh, to blend it. So if you scroll down, you'll see that these blending modes here, um, darken, multiply, color burn, and linear burn make the white disappear. If I go into the lighten blending modes, then the shadows stay. So I probably don't want to use that. It's also like another blending mode that could work might be one of the blending modes um, under the um, um, contrast group, which is overlay, soft light, hard light, vivid light, linear light, pin light, and hard mix. None of those really do a good job. So in this case, I'm just going to stay with one of the blending modes in the in the darken category. So I can select, for example, maybe um, the multiply blending mode. In this case, I think linear burn just gives me a stronger effect. So I'll just stick with that. So there's my piece of glass right there. See that? Cool. So now what I want to do is I want to apply a reflection to this piece of glass. And before I do that, I want to make sure that I remove the white uh, from outside of the glass. So I just want to keep the glass itself. So that's the one step that I kind of uh, kind of missed. So I'm going to I'm just going to place the, the piece of glass right in front so I can see the entire layer. And then with the quick selection tool, I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to just select the glass like so and you don't have to be precise because the blending mode will get rid of any of those little straight pixels that we miss and there it is awesome it looks fantastic so now i can just click on the layer mask icon to make sure that i only have the piece of glass selected and again the layers don't have to be perfect because the blending mode will take care of the rest so what I'm going to do now is go back into the blending mode that I selected earlier. I think I had linear burn. There it is. And the reason that I did that is so that I can now take my model layer and I'm just going to convert her into a smart object. So this is the advanced part. This is the level up of this tutorial if you're a little more advanced. Um, because what's going to happen now is if I convert her into a smart object, that means that I can replace the contents later and all the other smart objects duplicated from it will update. So you can create a series of posters with this technique. 
If that sounds too complicated, don't worry. Just do one poster and then come back and rewatch the video and convert it to a smart object. So the smart object step is optional, but you're going to see in a moment why it's a uh, cool um, effect. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate the layer, Control J, Command J in the Mac. But before I do that, I need to convert it into a smart object. So convert it into a smart object and then Control J, Command J in the Mac to duplicate. And now I can place her here and I can um, also change the blending mode on, on her. But what I'm gonna do is actually maybe since if I clip her to the layer below, notice what happens. The blending, uh, blending mode gets applied even though she's set to normal. So we don't really want that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a group. I'm gonna place the glass in the group, the piece of glass, and I'm gonna place her in the group. And then this layer that we made on the glass, we're gonna apply that to the group by clicking and dragging it over. So then now she is there. And I can do a couple things. I can change the blending mode on her if I want to. So maybe find a blending mode that sort of looks like, um, makes it seem like she's coming through the glass a little bit. So maybe one of the uh, blending modes like um, maybe hard light or something like that and maybe reduce the opacity a little bit, whatever gives you the, the best result that you want. But the cool thing now is, is that we're really only looking at, at that piece, right? The rest, the reason that we can see the rest of the image is because it's aligned perfectly. But if the glass was really you know, coming towards us and in front of her, then it wouldn't be a perfect match. So what we wanna do now is click on, on her layer, on the layer that's inside the group, and then scale it up, like so. And now, um, we can move the glass into position, right? So we can just place her, place the glass wherever we want. So maybe come here, and actually I should I should have placed the glass first, but that's okay. So I'm moving her here, and uh, let me just place the layer right back where it should have been, like somewhere around there. And maybe I don't wanna, bring down the opacity too much. So you can decide exactly where you want the reflection to be and how you want it to be. And again, you may have to, um, depending on the color that you're using and the luminosity of the layers that you're using, you will have to um, find a different blending mode. Um, so hard light is working for me in this case. And then you can just decide how to place it over, um, over the layer, like so. If you want to, you could also even select the um, normal blending mode and that's okay too. Um, and you can, you shouldn't set the layer to a hundred percent because then you won't be able to actually see the glass. But if you reduce the opacity down a little bit, then you can see some of that coming through. You can even place the glass on top of her if you like, and then set this layer to a hundred percent. So, excuse me. So there's a lot of different options. And again, it all depends on the, on, on your background. So in this case, I have a, you know, a fairly simple background with, um, where the luminosity is not is low, it's a light background. If I had a darker background, then the blending mode that you select may have to be a different one. So I'm just giving you all the different options um, so you can find something that works for you. In this case, what I'm liking is having the mask on the group, then the piece of glass on top with the linear burn blending mode, which gives me just the darker areas of the, of the glass, and then a layer a duplicate layer set to normal right underneath. And then I can probably, you know, just move her around a little bit more and figure out how she, how the, the reflection of that glass would better best look. Right now I press control T, command T to transform and I can't see the corner handles. Um, so if you want to zoom out and see the corner handles when, when you have a layer active and the bounding box is active but you can't see it, you can just press control zero, command zero in the Mac and it zooms out and you can see the corner handles and then you know you can scale this in and move her around accordingly. So, so that's one uh, piece of glass there. All we gotta do now is just follow this same, once you find the right combination of blending modes, opacity and all that, what we have to do now is just repeat the process with another piece of glass. So why don't we do that? Let me just find another piece of glass that I think would work in this case. I actually move the group, but I don't wanna do that. So maybe this one right here, this one might be a cool one. So I'm just gonna make a selection around it with the lasso tool, this tool here, lasso. Just click and drag and you freehand the selection. And 
what um, I'm going to do now is click on the layer mask icon. There's my layer mask. And then you can do what I did earlier, create a group, drag that in. Actually, don't drag the layer mask in there. See, the layer mask is not complete because I needed to rasterize the layer, meaning we make it into actual pixels. And then I can apply the layer mask just to cut everything out because I really don't need it. So I can work destructively in this case, but I, I still have, actually I don't still have it because I didn't duplicate the layer. Let me undo that. Um, you always want to duplicate the layer so that you don't rasterize and um, apply the layer mask to the original um, image because then you'll lose all your other pieces. So just make sure you don't rasterize and flatten the layer mask like I did there. If you do, just undo Control Z, Command Z on the Mac. Um, but anyway, at this point, I can come in and just once again make a selection of my glass really quickly with the quick selection tool. Doesn't have to be perfect and create your layer mask by clicking on the layer mask icon. Uh, make sure that that's inside of that new group. Drag the layer mask in there. Duplicate the model. Uh, actually, I won't duplicate the model yet. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to figure out where I want this piece of glass, right? So I'll just, um, we have that piece of glass there. And then with this second one, I could just maybe transform it. And, you know, maybe it's coming off of this side. Like so, something like that, right? That looks pretty good. So what I'll do now is um, change the blending mode. I already forgot what blending mode we used earlier, but it's really easy to remember. I can go back into the original group and see that we use the linear blending mode. So I can go back here and I can select the same blending mode, um, linear burn. There it is. I can select the model layer, press Control J, Command J on the Mac to duplicate that layer and drag it underneath inside of the group. And there it is. Now, if I press Control T, Command T to transform that layer, see how I can distort that? So now it's creating that reflection in the glass. So you can see how you can start adding all these different elements and build up on your image until you get that broken glass effect. There's one more um, layer in here that you should be using for this effect and it's this broken glass layer. So what I can do on this layer is I'll, I'll disable all the other layers just so that we can see this layer. Uh, with the broken cracked glass and I can just use one of the blending modes. Again, the blending modes in this first category, the darkened category, they are going to make the bright pixels disappear and you're going to keep the dark pixels. So that's what we want on something like this. So maybe I could do something like, let's see, which one looks better? Um, I probably, maybe linear burn still looks pretty good. So what I'll do is I'll click and drag the corner handles here and then just fill the entire image. If I want to change how the blend uh, affects the layer that I'm on now, the broken glass layer, I can go into image adjustment levels and change the luminosity so it changes the blend. So I can change the luminosity and it changes the blend. See that? So it's up to you. You can fine tune how the layer blends with the layer below. And I don't want the glass affecting her. So I'm just going to select my original model layer. I'm going to go into the quick selection tool and use Adobe Sensei, Adobe's artificial intelligence, machine learning technology, and click on select subject in the options bar to automatically make a selection around her. It saves me the type of uh, time of doing that. And I can go back into the broken glass layer. And from here, I can create a layer mask. But if I just click on the layer mask icon, I make a mask around her so the cracks are in, you know, on her. And that's, that's an effect you may want, but that's not what I want in this case. I want the background to be the, the cracks and broken glass. So you can do two things at this point. You can either press, once you have the layer mask active, you can press Control I, Command I on the Mac to invert, or you can just go back to the beginning when you have the selection active, the marching ants. If you hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click on this little icon, the layer mask, it creates an inverted selection. So there it is. So now we have this cool piece of glass. Here's another trick for you. If you click on this chain link icon, it breaks the link between the layer and the layer mask. So now I can select the layer and I can move the glass to a better position. I can scale it, I can um, scale it and do all kinds of different effects, whatever, you know, whatever I think works best for my image. I'll enable the other two pieces of glass and we have um, that effect. 
Um, I don't have the time to create more of these pieces. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate like this one um, and I'll, you know, transform it just so it looks a, a little bit different. And I'll just put it over here. I'll rotate it here. And actually, um, this broken glass layer, I'm just going to put it below those pieces because it should be below those pieces. But anyway, so there's there's my uh, broken glass effect. And what I'm going to do now is on this one, the one that I rotated, I'm just going to delete that model copy and add a new model in there. And then I'm going to distort her accordingly so that it's is different, right? So there's there's the effect, and, and in your projects, just do a whole bunch of these pieces. I don't have the time to do that now, so I'm just gonna have three. But the reason that I'm showing you this is to show you the power of the smart object, which is what I was talking about earlier, the advanced section, the level up section in this challenge. So if you double click on the smart object, it's gonna open up that model, right? And what I can do now is I can bring in a different image. So I know I have some downloads here, and we'll use this guy. So this guy now will be the model. So I can just put him in there, put his face more or less where she was, right about there. Um, accept the changes, save the smart object, and when I come back, that same effect is applied to this guy. We didn't have to do any extra work. So if you've seen the movie um, Glass, well, you don't have to see the movie. You can just um, look up Glass movie posters online, and you'll see all these different posters with different characters with a similar glass effect. So this is something that you can do. You can create a series of broken glass effects by using the same technique. In some cases, you will have to change something. So obviously, the shape of the layer mask here needs to change, but that's not that difficult. All the hard work of put putting the pieces of glass together and putting them in the right group with the right layer mask, all that is already done for you. You just have to worry about specific things like that, uh, this broken mask, uh, broken glass layer mask, so that it matches the new body or position of the uh, model that you bring in. So yeah, that's um, today's challenge. Let me just quickly look at the chat. I know that I talked for like 20 minutes straight, but I just wanted you guys to like really, really um, understand uh, the effect that we're creating, um, how smart objects work, and like really try to explain to you how all this works so you can go back and watch it later um, if you have any questions. Um, let me see if I have, oh man, there's a whole lot of comments. Um, let me see. Hello, hello, just a bunch of hellos still. All right, cool. So, awesome. Oh yeah, so it's a good question. So good point, uh, Gina. Um, when you make your selection, you can do a layer via copy, then you won't lose your original glass layer. Yeah, so you can press, um, uh, I mean, there's a, uh, several ways in which you can do that. So very good suggestion. So basically, I mean, I can do my selection of the glass here and then just press Control J, and then it, that's just in a new layer. That's another way of doing it. So yeah, that works too. Thanks for the comment, Gina. That was really helpful. Um, thank you, people. Uh, Van Dam. thank you, Mandy. Um, cool, thanks for sharing my behance, Sam. Awesome, yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, I have like a minute left, so let me just make sure that everybody knows where to download the assets in case you came in uh, a little late. Behance.net slash challenge slash photoshop we're working on the glass effect um today but if you missed the album cover you can go watch the video and download the assets there remember to upload your projects to behance using the hash uh, uh, hashtag ps daily challenge ps daily challenge so when i do this search tomorrow i want to see a whole bunch of broken glass effects all right uh, we only have a couple of album covers but i don't blame you guys because i forgot to tell you the hashtag so make sure you upload the work onto Behance, create a project under um, keywords, make sure you enter the word, the keyword PS daily challenge. Do that on Instagram and all the other social medias as well. Also remember to go into the, um, uh, where, where'd it go? Into the <laughs> community chat that's on Discord. When you're on Discord, make sure that you click on current challenge and then show me the album covers like the good people have been doing here and the broken glass effect. So thank you guys so much for being here with me today. I got to get going, but stick around. There's a lot more live streams coming up and I believe the next one's a live stream on Photoshop as well. So make sure that you go take a quick bathroom break and come right back for the next stream. 
All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again tomorrow for another Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Thanks so much.